Hey guys, I want to show you some new features of the free JMesh Tools add-on for hard surface modeling with Blender. And the first one is to create curves from the JMesh Tools primitives. Okay, so let's start with a simple primitive, a rectangle. I just press Ctrl, left click and draw it onto the mesh. And then I press Alt and M, also a new feature, to turn the primitive into a mesh. Once we have this, I turn to Vertex Selection. Then select these vertices here at the top, then press S followed by Y to scale. This is just regular modeling. Then box select these vertices and press G followed by X to move. Okay, now to make it more interesting, I press Ctrl, Shift and B to add a bevel. And here's the new feature Mesh to Curve. It just takes the outline of the mesh, then removes the inner face and turns the outline into a curve. And then you can assign a material, for instance. Here I have this kind of metal steel material. And of course, you can always change the curve. For example, here, the depth. Okay, then I convert the curve into a mesh, which is an existing feature, it's not new. And to have it on the other side as well, I can press mirror. It just adds a mirror modifier. Okay, the next one, I already showed this implicitly, is to turn primitives into meshes. And that's pretty useful to model any shape you like, and then for instance use it as a boolean cutter. Here start now with a circle primitive, which is snapped to the underlying mesh, and then I press again Alt and M to turn it into a mesh. And perhaps you know you can select these vertices and press Shift and X to dissolve, and then we can select this edge, press G and Y to move it along the Y axis, then extrude the whole thing. And then we have an interesting shape that we can cut into the mesh. I use the slice option now. And to make it look more interesting, I can assign a different material. Nice, now let's do the same with a different primitive. I use a rectangle. Center it for the X axis by pressing Ctrl and the gizmo, the green arrow. And now again Alt and M, and here we have the mesh. I press Escape to close the primitive, and then we can again modify the mesh as we like, add a bevel for instance, extrude it downwards and I enable the X-ray so that I can see how far I'm extruding, and then I use Difference to cut into the mesh. Nice, now let's symmetrize this to the minus X axis. You see this here in the gizmo, but I will add a more comfortable way to symmetrize the mesh. And for the other object, I will add a mirror, but I have to set it for the Y axis. Yeah, and that's looking more and more interesting. How about cutting a hole into the steel parts? I just draw a circle onto the object. Then I center it to the object. To do this, I Ctrl left click the white square of the gizmo, move it a bit more downwards, and then Ctrl left click to cut the hole. And you see it is added to the other part as well, because still we have the mirror modifier activated. Okay, next one. It's not a feature of the add on, I just want to show that this is possible to add bevels for the geometry and also assign materials to parts of the mesh. So first let's add some edge loops by pressing Ctrl and the R key and then move the mouse wheel. Then scale them in by pressing S followed by Y in this case for the Y axis. Then I go to face selection, select these faces. Be sure to have X-ray enabled so that you select the faces at the back sides as well. And then I use the tool extrude along normals to extrude out the faces. Okay, and now I use the bevel feature of JMesh tools to make it look really crisp. Great, now I select the faces again, and then I go to the material, and I have a second material added, and I just assign it to the selected faces. It's nice, but I just use it for prototyping, to see how it looks like if I would add a texture for these areas. Okay, now I add some ambient occlusion and bloom effects to make it look more pop. And then let's go ahead and add, and also slice, new objects. I like to add an object now that is a bit more detailed, a kind of holder for these handles, so again I add a rectangle, 
A simple primitive and press Alt and M to turn it into a mesh. The advantage of adding new objects using primitives is that the mesh is snapped to the underlying mesh and so they are created where you need them. Ok, now some simple modeling stuff, I add some edge loops, then extrude them upwards, or better to say the face in the middle, then remove these faces and add a bevel to the outer edges. Pretty basic stuff, also bevel the vertices at the corners, again press Ctrl, Shift and B for this. Yeah, and then we can add a solidify modifier to add some thickness. Be sure to check even thickness. I want to add a bevel, but I will do this later on again when I apply the solidify modifier. Now I add the steel material for this object. Looks good, but I moved this in edit mode by accident, so I have to set the origin to the geometry again. Then I move it to the location where it holds the handle. Make it a bit wider by scaling it. Ok, and then I apply the solidify modifier. Alright, then I bevel again and set the bevel to, let's say, 4mm. That's better, and now let's do a slicing with the circle primitive. I draw it onto the mesh, center it, and then Ctrl left click to slice. Ok, then reuse the primitive move it downwards and slice again. Then I press Ctrl and J to join these two new objects, move them a bit upwards, looks pretty nice and then I join the whole thing and duplicate it. Ok, duplicate once more and move the duplicates to the handle on the right side. Ok, one more feature, create arrays of meshes and then use them as cutters. So again, I draw a rectangle primitive and center it along the x-axis, create a mesh from this primitive, press Alt and M, then add the bevels as before, and extrude this to the inside of the other mesh. Alright, I now want to add an array modifier and this can simply be done by pressing this button. Then this dialog pops up and we can define the offset, in this case along the y-axis, and also the item count of the array. Ok, now I move it to kind of center it, but it bothers me a bit that I have to center it by eye, so at the moment I'm thinking of improving this feature. If you have any ideas, let me know. Ok, now I slice to create these kind of insets. The array modifier is applied automatically and then I can move these objects a bit more to the inside of the mesh and then add again a steel material. Ok, looks nice, but now the roundup. I want to do some more slicing at the corners. I want to add some steel cylinders. So slice with the circle primitive. And I have the primitive mirror for the x-axis activated, so that it is added to the other side as well. And now I can select this, go to edit mode and press S, followed by Z, to scale it up along the z-axis. It's a bit too simple, I add an edge loop and move it up. Then select these faces here and extrude them along the normals. Now I symmetrize along the Z axis to the negative Z axis. Add a bevel, it's always a good idea to bevel in hard surface modeling. Yeah, and how about extruding this face to the inside? Ok, 
Then I do an X symmetrize. Again, I add a steel material for these parts. And I want to have them on the back side as well, so I symmetrize the box first for the Y axis and then mirror the steel cylinders. But of course for the Y axis, not X. Okay, and I'm quite happy with this hard surface prototype. I don't know what it is, but who cares? It's just to show you the features of the JMesh Tools add-on and hard surface modeling with Blender. Okay, guys, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on my Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. If you have any questions, add these to the comments below. Support me on my Patreon, this would be great. And I see you in the next one here on JNM.